this part of the book on on the um, recovery of the men um, from Turbine 33 sort of bumps into maybe the most famous Navy SEAL recovery effort, uh, Lone Survivor with Marcus Luttrell, which has had all kinds of uh, um, publicity. But it's that part of, of the recovery of Turbine 33 that I think is the most, uh, maybe the most important part of your book because it gives us a look and an insight into something maybe we didn't know about and the challenges there. But walk us through almost the accidental um, uh, looking for and ultimately recovering um, uh, rescue, I should say, of uh, Marcus Luttrell. Yeah, so like I was saying, it was a very hasty mission and we really didn't know everything that was going on on the ground when we actually arrived. Uh, we knew the helicopter was down, and that was our primary goal. Well, as as the mission developed, uh, we were informed of the four-man Navy SEAL reconnaissance team that was also missing. And we thought that we might uh, see them at the crash site, but they weren't there. Uh, at that point, we moved forward to try and find them. And again, no intel. We had some. We knew their, the path that they were supposed to take, so we definitely searched every single nook and cranny of that mountain. And it took us days to really locate and find and narrow down the areas that he could have run to. And I'll just say this, Marcus Luttrell, I have no clue how he survived that ambush. His, his team was ambushed in, a, in terrain that no human could have fought out of so i don't know how he actually got out of there i mean the movie probably depicts it pretty well based on what i've heard from him but uh pretty unbelievable how it took us days to find him on that mountain and we knew his potential path that he had taken so just shows you how rugged that terrain really is well, and I think it also highlighted for me in reading uh, your book, Leave No Man Behind, the untold story of the Rangers' unrelenting search for Marcus Luttrell, the Navy SEAL lone survivor in Afghanistan by Tony Brooks. It, it highlighted for me just how difficult this was, that not only the train was, but then working with the locals, he's ultimately found in a village, and you have a line in there about, you know, if we didn't find him when we did, who's to say the village elders wouldn't have just traded him away to the Taliban? And, and man, that just hit me when you sort of pointed out that all that you guys were doing and pushing for was really the, you know, sort of the first man to get there. If there was a survivor, you had to get him and bring him back before, if you will, the Taliban would have found him. That, that was, that was a, powerful section that you wrote yeah i mean if you think about it you know the amount of in in the movie i think they they do kind of point this out that you know the taliban wasn't going to just walk away they knew he was there and they wanted him so you know the decision could have been made at any moment for them to say no we're going to get him now and we're going to take you guys out so we knew that we knew that Every single second mattered. So we were moving at speeds that even even in training, when we're trying to push our bodies to the limit, we would never uh, safely move at the speeds we were moving at. We were moving at reckless speeds, and we all knew it. But we were okay with it because the alternative was the Taliban getting our guy. So, yeah, I, I do think that that moment every single moment out there mattered like what you heard listen to this full episode and more on the apple podcast app blog talk radio google podcasts or iHeartRadio. and now streaming on amazon music audible and spotify